I know you're probably wondering what the content of this video would be. Judging from the title, How Moving to the UK Changed My Life. Now, basically, in this video, I'm just going to share with you guys my journey from, you know, how I was able to move from this. Now, this picture was taken while I was going to work. This was um, going for my part-time job while I was still studying to making this particular video a couple of weeks ago when I was also going to work on my new job role as a data analyst here in the United Kingdom. So I'm just going to share with you guys my journey from, you know, going through the tough time, you know, faced by an immigrant in the UK to how far my journey has been, what were the process in between moving from working as a care assistant while studying in the UK to getting the data analyst role in the United Kingdom. So basically, if you're going through a lot, if you are, you know, having a lot of challenges as a new immigrant in the UK and you're about to give up, that you sure do want to watch this video as so I'll share with you how my journey has been, what I've gone through, how I was able to overcome some of the challenges you're currently facing in the United Kingdom as a new immigrant. So if it's something you'd like to see, just keep watching and keep watching to the end. And if you're coming across my channel for the first time, hit the subscribe button to join the amazing growing family. So guys, let's get into the video. To be honest with you guys, this video was inspired, you know, by some of the conversations I've had with a lot of people who recently moved into the UK on different visa categories, most especially those that came into the UK on the student visa. Now, to be honest with you guys, for those who are, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, there have been quite a lot of challenges being faced by, you know, living in the UK as a student. You know, one of the top challenges basically is being able to, you know, um, survive, taking up your financial responsibility. Because I tell people on this channel, your first day in the UK bills, your bills start counting. As a matter of fact, you start paying bills on your first arrival. I mean, the first day, the first minute, the first seconds you get into the UK, you start paying bills. And I've seen a lot of people who have been going through a lot, you know, when it comes to paying up their bills, you know, um, being confused on what they want to do after they're done with their program, you know, stuck between two different bad options, not, not necessarily bad options, but not too good enough options. I just want to share with you guys my story, my journey, um, all through coming to the UK as a student, working as a carer for, you know, about two years and, you know, being able to transition into tech and all of those information. So just a bit to inspire you and to tell you that you need to just keep pushing regardless of what you're going through there's always um, a light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm just going to do like a backstory, really. Um, before I came into the UK, um, I used to work as a banker back in Nigeria. So I worked in the banking sector in Nigeria. And I wasn't really doing bad. You know, for those who know um, how much bankers make in Nigeria, I wasn't doing bad as a single person or married guy, young guy who has practically no responsibility. And the money I was making while I was in the bank was really good and it wasn't so bad for me to be honest. And I decided to move to the UK to study. And this was after, you know, I've been in the bank for like close to three years and I decided to move to, to the UK where I had no one, I had no family <laughs> and it was the decision I wanted to make. So I came to the UK and the picture you can see on the screen was um, my first day in the UK. Not my first day per se because I came during COVID and, you know, during COVID you had to isolate for about 10 days. So this picture you're seeing on the screen was um, the day I came out of isolation, really. So I think I went to the mall to get some stuff, to get to, you know, the apartment I'll be staying and all of that. So I come to the UK like every one of you or some of you watching this video as an international student. And I must confess to you guys, it wasn't easy. Now for me, um, I, I had a lot of savings when I came. I wouldn't say a lot because converting it to pounds made, made it felt like it wasn't, it was nothing. So when I came to the UK, I was able to pay like 60% of my tuition fee. And I know a lot of people can relate, to be honest with you guys. And one of the jobs, or should I say, the major job I did in the UK for like two years um, was the care job. Now this is a, this is a picture of, you know, me at work, just trying to, you know, um, just was doing break, I guess, trying to just feel good and, you know, a bit unmotivated about the job, to be honest. Uh, but you have to pay the bills. To be I, know, I know a lot of people can relate to this. You know, imagine um, at the end of the week, for those that work, uh, you know, that do jobs that pay them um, wages, that is, they get paid weekly. Many people can relate to what I'm about to say. Now, imagine you getting your pay. Let's say, for instance, after the end of the week, you're able to earn let's say for instance 180 pounds and imagine after you got the money 180 pounds you had to send about 150 pounds to the university to you know reduce the balance of your tuition fee it was it was like that for me for 
for months. So when I make a money, I make some certain amount of money every week. I try to pay the university every week just to you know show some sense of commitment to them, you know, so <laughs> I don't get kicked out of the school and eventually kicked out of the university of, of the country. So and that was the struggle for many international students. Which I would tell people if you're planning to come into the UK as an international student, please ensure you have an adequate plan. You don't want to come here and start struggling. So I came out as a single person, I had no dependent that could work and help with the bills. So thankfully I was lucky enough to get like an accommodation scholarship with my university. That was my saving grace. I would, you know, <laughs> even though I, I didn't really enjoy my program while studying in the UK or while studying in the University of Sunderland, but one of the things I would appreciate the university for was the fact that the uh, accommodation scholarship was available and it gave so many of us like a little bit of buffer when we came in. So we we're not bothered about paying bills when it comes to, you know, lights, um, house rent and all of those things. So it was like a buffer for us and I'm eternally grateful to the University of Sunderland for that initiative at that time. So I had to focus on just paying up the balance of my tuition fee and it can be a lot of struggle to be honest. You know, people trying to manage um, the academic responsibility, trying to sort out bills and there are probably some other bills back home that you need to also sort out. So it can really be exhausting. But trust me guys, it's just a phase. You know, and I, I know I went through that phase. I knew how challenging it was and I know my own um, experience might not be as bad or as terrible as yours but trust me guys regardless of what you're going through as an international student trying to meet up with bills trust me there are people who have gone through that same um, you know, experience and they were able to come out um, successfully so I was attending classes um, the job I really did I practically worked with one um, care agency all through my stay um, you know as a student uh, with this agency I was you know I'm working as a carer, um, you go to work, sometimes you go unmotivated, but when you remember the bills you need to pay, especially school fees. And at that time, my investor was even threatening us that if you don't pay, and I've made a video on that on this channel, if I don't pay my tuition fee balance uh, before a particular deadline, they're going to withdraw that sponsorship, da da da, and I'm going to be sent back home. And it was really tough. But in the midst of this, I was still going to school. Now, this is a, a picture of me going to school and just taking a picture with some friends just to motivate myself, honestly, because at that but this particular point, I was not motivated, but you just had to do what you had, you know, to do, basically. So, now, I was able to sort my tuition fee out at some point. And by the time I was able to pay my tuition fee, my accommodation scholarship expired. So, I had to get an accommodation outside and I start paying bills in full. I mean, in full. Because as, as at that time, I was not paying rent. So, now I have to start paying rent. Start paying for electricity bill, water bill, gas, data. I was a general free Wi-Fi at the school university, um, the university accommodation. Now I have to start paying for Wi-Fi and all of those things. So a lot of bills started coming in and I had to work. I had to, you know, try to get placements, which I did eventually get. And it was really a lot. It was really a lot of struggle trying to balance everything up. And, you know, the, the, the struggle wasn't, wasn't uh, palatable. However, there were a lot of things I learned in the journey and it was during this process i decided to start my youtube channel now the picture you can see was when i was going to shoot my first video um in newcastle for the channel that was i think that was practically my first video on this channel and you know a lot of things has happened during this period you know um making a decision towards the end of my program if i was going to stay back and one of the things i did differently which i tried to advise people to do the same while you're studying while you're trying to meet up with these bills the few minutes you have or the few hours you have um you know to do some other things you need to start thinking and planning on what is the next plan after your program which is one thing i did so while i was struggling with all of these things creating content on youtube also tried to focus on what do i want to do after my program do i want to go for post study work visa do i want to try and get a job am i going towards the health and care visa route you need to start thinking of this early enough which is one of the mistakes most people make i spoke with a lot of people who started thinking of their plan after school a month two months to when their visa is going to expire it's not going to work you need to start making those plans so i remember going for work you know i would go for work get back home late in the night go for classes get back home late in the evening i was still going to take up my data analytics training still learn a lot of stuff you know still push out a lot of application i've shared a lot of you know information on my journey on getting my data analyst job in the uk you might want to check out any of those videos in the description or just check out the video on this channel and you need to start making that plan as early as possible because i see people tell me oh i'm going to start a data analysis course um when i'm done with my program trust me you being done with your program or trying to get into those stuff might be late not necessarily late but because if you decide to invest for instance you finish your program and you have let's say two months on your visa 
left, two months is not enough to learn a new course or to take up a training and land a job and switch to a work visa. It doesn't work that way. I practically started my training about a year to the end of my program and it's really worked for me. I know a lot of people are coming for just one year program, which my I came for a two year program anyway, so it was a bit um, you know, not easy for me, but I was still able to, you know, manage myself to build my data analytics skills and all of those things. So guys, it, it, it's it's just about being intentional about what you want to do. There are a lot of things, a lot of people who are, you know, struggling with bills and they tend to forget what's going to happen after the program. So we have to start making those plans as early as possible. I took up quite a number of courses, you know, online, went on self-journey, a self-learning journey, and it pays it pays off. So towards the end of my program, I started getting a lot of rejections and, you know, I was able to re-strategize. If you're probably having a lot of questions on what you need to do or what you're confused about, you can state that in the comment section. I'm going to make sure I respond to everyone in the comments of this particular um, video. But if you have anything that's a bit personal you, you don't want to share on, uh, you know, in the comment section, just click on the link in the description of this video for my one-to-one -one chat. Then we can have a one-to-one -one chat and can share this with you. Share with you some of the strategies I used for some things that you think might be relevant um, to you. So I was able to land my tech job a couple of weeks before the end of my program. And I was able to switch to a tier 2 visa about, I think about two months. I think I got my tier 2 visa in April, in March. And my, yeah, about three months. And my uh, student visa was supposed to expire um, June 17. So I was able to get a tech job or a data analyst job a um, couple of months before my visa expired. I switched to the tier 2 job. So I understand the journey is difficult. Um, you know, I went from, you know, doing the job I wasn't so happy about to doing the job I smile and I'm excited going. You know, so most times when I'm driving to work, I'm always super, I don't know why, not super excited, but I'm just really happy because I know I'm going to some, to a place I'm happy about, you know, I'm going to a place whereby what I'm doing is something I want to do, something I'm excited I'm doing. If that's not your case right now as an immigrant in the UK, trust me, it just takes time. It takes you know, you put in the effort required to get to where you're going to. It doesn't mean you won't get there. That's why I tell people, don't get discouraged. Just make your research. Put in the work that you need to put in and then you definitely get a reward. The UK is a very structured country. So it's just about you doing the right thing and you're going to get the reward off of, of your labor, basically. Yeah, so that's what I've been. I went from struggling as an international student to getting a job. I'm not where I want to be, honestly. I still have a lot of, you know, goals and a lot of things I'm aspiring to get here in the UK. However, I've been able to go through the journey from struggling to at least getting something I want and I'm still aiming for, you know, better things to come in the United Kingdom. So if you find this video inspiring, please like, um, click on the like button. If you have anything to say or any comments you have, please state in the comment section. And if you're coming across this channel for the first time, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button to join the amazing growing family and my returning subscribers. Thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate you guys. So this will be the end of this video. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you.